Yo, 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 what's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you for tuning in to another episode of People Suck, Love Them Anyways. If there's nothing else that you hear through the day, through the week, through the month, through the year that is more true, it's people suck, but you gotta love them anyways. That's the reason why I'm always joined by my sidekick, <laughs> Nicky Nick, because Nick does suck sometimes, but I gotta love him yeah. anyways, right? I try my best. Absolutely, and I think if his uh, speaking role was larger than mine, he would say the same thing about me, you know what I'm saying? I think he would be like, you know what, Kenan, you suck, but I gotta love you anyways, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, when you're you know constantly late today, which you have been, so, you know, it's been, it's been, I, it's I'm funny. late, man, for everything, uh, yeah. for the most part. Uh, I'm either right on time or late, except for church. I do show up mm -hmm. to church early, about an hour and 15 minutes before it starts, maybe an hour and 20. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like I do good with that regard. But, yes, everything else, man, uh, I'm pretty late, too. I'm not going to lie about mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah, you just need to pull the, uh, the Gandalf thing. You know, wizards never wait or never late nor early. He's always precisely on time. Yeah, Something I can like I can handle that. I don't yeah. even know who you're talking about, but Lord I can of the go Rings. with that. Oh, man, see, I never saw that. I never yeah, saw Lord maybe. of the Rings, bro. Um, I'll pray for you. Yeah, well, pray for me because Star Wars. I've never seen Star yeah, Wars no, either, yeah, man. I'll see you later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just can't, man. I mean, I, you know, I just... Um, but even somebody was asking me the other day about a movie, and I'm, I'm just not a, I'm not a real huge movie buff. I'm not a real huge movie person. Uh, I think as I've gotten older... Uh, I'm more or less like my, my time and my days are so consumed that yeah. it's, it's very difficult sometimes yeah. just to sit down and stay stationary for like two hours. I was just telling somebody that the other day. I was like, you know, I, I'm a huge movie person. Like, yeah. I love movies. Uh, and like I was talking to somebody the other day about a, a group of movies that were out. And I was like, yeah, I ain't seen any of them. And he's like, man, why not? I was like, man, I ain't got time. You ain't anymore. got time. I was like, I ain't got time. I said, I haven't sat down and watched a movie at <laughs> home in, in, since at least my son's been born. Yeah. Know? So 10 months ago, at least, if not longer. Listen, kids mess everything up. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm here to tell you the truth. Like if it comes to, if you want a good life, don't have kids, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> what is that? That, uh, that dink lifestyle, yeah. like dual income, no kids. Oh like. man, that is a beautiful thing. Um, <laughs> what a beautiful thing it is. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, so, but no, I love my kids yeah. very much. Very appreciative of them. If they're um, listening to this. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. If not, then, uh, yeah, I'll go. Yeah. We'll stick with the previous statement. Um, but anyways, again, thank you so much for tuning back into another episode. We appreciate it so much. Uh, we appreciate all the support. Uh, Tell me the new country. I keep Algeria. Talking. Algeria, man. Mm. Don't get it confused with algae, but yeah. Algeria. It's not underwater. It's yeah, not for real. Are we, is it? Is it no, underwater? No. Does it have water? Probably. Okay. No. All right. So, yeah, Algeria, thank you so much for tuning in, for hitting that download button. Thank you for the constant support in India, uh, oh, for yeah. sure. We're still shouting out India, man, until yep. we get an all-expenses-paid trip uh, yeah. over there. So, yeah, so we're, we're shouting that out, man. And let me tell you something, United States, you're getting a little bit lull. You're mm -hmm. getting a little bit uh, lackadaisical uh, because uh, as these countries keep adding up, um, our country total has surpassed yep. our state total, right? Yep. And, I mean, it was going to happen at some point in time, but you would think that we would clear all 50 states before we started, you know, going further in the countries, you yeah, know. You but, think uh, so, but, yeah, you know. but, you know, I mean, it's America. Yeah. People suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, much. Love them anyways. Uh, nonetheless, again, thank you so much. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for telling the friends and family about us. We're so appreciative of it. And, again, uh, as we even said today, if there's an area, if there's an avenue, uh, if there's a street, we want to fill it, and we want to tell people about Jesus. So this is just another way uh, to be able to do it. As Nick was talking about earlier, man, it's been a busy day. Uh, we had a, a wonderful church service today where uh, I feel like we uh, continue to grow. Like last week we talked about, not numerically, even though we are uh, growing numerically. But I feel as though week after week people are growing spiritually, man. And that is a, that is a good feeling to have um, as a pastor. It's a good feeling to... Um, to, to look up here at this altar on Sunday afternoons now uh, and to see, uh, Nick, to see all different age groups. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, we're seeing kids come to the altar um, yeah. that are eight, nine years old. We're seeing uh, teenagers, young adults come to the altar. We're seeing families come to the altar. We're seeing uh, older people. We're seeing, you know, I mean, like it's just, it's such a mixture, a melting pot of, of people who are, who are growing spiritually, who are calling more uh, to Jesus than ever before. Um, and I, I feel like that we're in, a, a, we're in a great time, a great spot, a great position um, as a church, man. But there's still so much more out there. There's still so much more ministry to do. Uh, and there's still so much more to just, to just you know, to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's one thing, man, uh, I, this is even off topic as to what I feel like we're going to talk about tonight. But 
what's one thing, man, that you would even like to accomplish um, in the ministry? You know, what's what's a goal? What's something that you'd just really like to get out there and just reach for, man? Yeah, I mean, I think it's one thing that I kind of was able to, to see um, last year, uh, you know, when you had that fun little stomach bug, uh, to, to be able to be up here, you know. You wish on death Sunday. on me, yeah, man. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, but anyway, anyway uh, no, I think, you know, it's 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 nice to, to get more plugged in, to get uh, to more out there. You know, I, I think... As I've mentioned before, you know, God has grown me a lot um, just over the last, you know, I'd say, shoot, five years, um, you know, just to be able to, you know, I, I told this, I think, even last week, you know, I, I used to be that person who just wouldn't even want to stand during church service. I didn't want people looking at me. I didn't want people talking to me. I absolutely hated when people talked to me, when people looked at me or shook my hand. Yeah. Like, I didn't like having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, didn't like standing in, I definitely didn't like standing in front of people. I've um, been having conversations, but again, you know, I, I do believe that God has grown me in, in a great capacity, you know, to be able to stand on here on a Sunday, to go downstairs on Wednesday nights to talk to the youth, um, you know, in previous jobs, you know, being able to stand in front of classrooms of 30 to 50 you know, kids sometimes yeah. and adults and to, to teach people and, you know, do, you know, now I'm, you know, I'm in marketing. So, you know, my face is out there in front of all kinds of people, you know, talking to them, uh, whether it's on social media or something like that. Um, you know, and it's definitely just grown and I, I want to see more of that. You know, I, and I think that's something that I, I still struggle with is the anxiety of walking up to people, talking to them uh, or, you know, the confidence in, in what I'm saying up here on a stage or, you know, in front of a classroom. I um, you know, I want to be able to grow more in that and see, you know, see myself become more comfortable with it yeah. um, and, and to, you know, because it, it was nice. You know, I think that that Sunday when I was up here, you know, it was a very spur of the moment thing. Uh, you know, it wasn't really something that I was expecting to do. Uh, but none you know, of us were right. Yeah, none of, none of us <laughs> none were. None of us were. No, but yeah. Uh, but you know, just afterwards, and, you know, and is, first off, and yeah, damn yeah. the person, okay, right. who got me sick. Yeah, damn that yeah, person. Yeah, absolutely. I'll pray for you. <laughs> I'm trying to get you out of hell, but I, I yeah. you know, I mean, I had some hard feelings toward towards yeah, whoever somebody, got me sick yeah. for a minute. I'm just yeah, saying, he was, he was not well. No, <laughs> he was I was not. not well. I was not. But go ahead. Uh, but you know, I, I want to see God be able to grow me to where I'm, you know, both more comfortable and more confident. Yeah. Uh, with, with speaking to a wider range and a wider variety of people, you know, it's something that I've set a goal for myself is to to try and be more open about walking up to people, especially if they're new and introducing myself, talking to them, uh, getting their name, which is something I'm horrible at. Uh, but, you know, getting their name, you know, finding out more about them, uh, getting more connected with the people in here, but also people out there, yeah. um, you know, because, you know, I feel like this is a good testing ground, a good practice ground. If I can get good in here, then it'll make me more confident to go out there and talk to people about Jesus. Yeah, it will, man. And, and like that's something, too. And I think we talked about this even last week about uh, just the work that goes on behind, you know, behind closed doors. And, you know, and even, even the Bible says that if you're faithful over a little, that he'll make you rulers over much one day. And, and that's where people... You know, people get this, and we talk about this a lot, where people get this mentality that, like, they just walk in and, and things are going to be handed to them. And it's like, it, it's it's not like that. And, I mean, this is in all seriousness. I tell everybody this all the time. But, like, I will I will fight you. Like, I will fight you. Hands, fist, feet. I'll, I'm feet. Mm -hmm. I'll cut you. I'll bite you. I'll do whatever I got to do uh, to protect this ministry. What I mean by that is, is the fact of that, like, you know, this ministry – came from nothing like it, it originated from nothing uh we had nothing to our name we didn't have a bank account we didn't have a penny in the bank we didn't have a church we didn't have people we didn't have an instrument we didn't have anything when we started and you know because some crazy people took a chance in a backyard one sunday um to see how far it's come and, and not just with i mean like you have to understand like it hasn't all been sunshine and daisies and, and it hasn't been uh, easy by any means. And there's been fights, there's been tears, there's been hurt, there's been anger, there's been frustration. And I'm just talking about between me and my wife. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, well, I, I mean, you talk about our kids the way you did. Yeah, you know? This is true. <laughs> this is true. Uh, you know, but no, I mean, like, you know, in all honesty, you talk about like, you know, everything that's happened and how, you know, like you've had to war so much to get to the point of where you are today. And people who are coming in off the streets, which we're seeing by groves now, um, it's insane. It's wonderful. Um, but, you know, I don't want people to, to also think that, you know, the first time they walk in here, it's like, oh, it's always been like this. No, it has not been like this. Um, you know, you're talking about going down and, and, and preaching to, to youth on Wednesday nights. And, you know, sometimes you'll have a good crowd. Sometimes you'll have two, you know. Uh, but the thing about it is, is that you're still there to teach and you're still there to put the work in and you're still there to be faithful over those two. 
And so if God can see you to show up on a Wednesday night and be like, you know what, I'm going to give you a message, you're going to, you're going to supply that message, and you're going to be faithful over those two, well then guess what? God's going to give you 22, and then God's going to give you 42, 62, 82, 102. And then we'll um, get kicked out by the city. Because then, <laughs> the there. then we'll be looking for a building yeah. somewhere at that point. Uh, I agree. If we have 100 kids downstairs on a Wednesday night, we're probably going to be looking for somewhere. We'll probably start renting somewhere else uh, at that point or buying or building or whatever we got to do. Uh, but, you know, it, it made me think, um, you know, about what you're talking about. Like on Wednesday nights up here, uh, our Wednesday nights have grown. Uh, they've gotten a lot bigger. Our leading leaders today meeting, uh, you, <laughs> this is no joke. And, and again, I mean, like I, don't, I will make no bones about where we come from, but like our leading leaders meeting today, was as big as what some of our first church services was. Mm. And for for to look out and to see everybody today, I was like, holy crap. I was like, what are we, you know, what are we doing? Right. This is amazing. This is great stuff. Um, but you know, there there was Wednesday nights where it was my wife, my kids, and maybe one other family, maybe two. You know, like I would preach on Wednesday nights to a 10, 11 people. Mm -hmm. And, and the thing about that was, was that like these 11 people knew me. They knew everything about me. Sometimes I think they didn't come to get more of God. Sometimes I think they come just because they felt sorry for me. You know what I mean? They're they still like, do. Yeah, yeah, they, they still, still, yeah, they still show up. Uh, but no joke. Like, I, you know, like whenever you looked out on a Wednesday night, it was just like you would preach, but you were preaching to people that you could sit at home and preach to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in that aspect, if I was to look out at those 10 or 11 and say, why are we doing this? What are we doing this for? Uh, nobody's coming. Let's just go home. Well, nobody's going to come. Nobody's going to walk through those doors if we're not being faithful over what we already have to begin with. And, and so, you know, like whenever we experience like what we've been experiencing over uh, the last, um, you know, three to five weeks, I feel like, um, maybe closer to eight, I don't know. Uh, but I feel like what we're experiencing now is just a byproduct of being able to come in on a Wednesday and on a Sunday. And, you know, it just, uh, uh, I know that I don't motivate you very often. Uh, you I mean, know, I'm not a very motivational person. Sometimes, <laughs> well, but. you quote everybody but me, you yeah. know, but so whatever. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, at the same point in time, like, you know, what you're doing is just a, a, seed sowing session right now uh of where you know if you keep on being uh faithful over those ones that you do have you know god will end up sending you more uh to a point of where it's like you know oh well you know people will walk in and be like well oh well nick's got a you know a hundred group a uh, hundred group uh, you know uh, yeah, session in here yeah and, and, and so yeah and so and they're gonna be like oh man this you know has it always been like this and it's like no absolutely not yeah. we may not even have to have a community-wide easter egg hunt for that so i know we, right we, we oh, get I, people that way yeah <laughs> the yeah. old-fashioned way yeah absolutely not bribing them no uh, yeah yeah not yeah not putting hundred dollar <laughs> bills in easter yeah. in easter eggs hey, here's uh, a nintendo switch for you yeah um uh, i won one last I year no. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i mean it's just it, if you're faithful uh, and I think that's the big thing, man, where if you're faithful and, uh, I guess we can tie that into what we were talking about today, uh, as well, but you know, it, it has a lot to do with staying consistent and, mm -hmm. and consistent was what, what we talked a lot about today is just consistency in your following of Christ and, and, and what, what your calling is in your life. And, um, I feel like so many people, man, abandon Nick plans, you know, abandon, uh, jobs, relationships, churches ministry uh even because it's like it gets hard it gets difficult it gets uh you know it gets to a point of where you're 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 i ain't gonna say you're questioning but i mean sometimes you do question you know mm -hmm. but it gets to a point of where you're like you know you feel like you're getting pressed on and you're angry and you're frustrated and shoot i can't tell you how many times man that mm -hmm. i would just sit up here by myself you know on sunday afternoons everybody would leave um i say everybody like it was a lot of people <laughs> but like uh, all 12. Yeah, all 12 <laughs> would leave. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, it would leave, man. And like, you know, I'm, I would just sit up here in the floor and I would just look out and I would be like, you know, where's the growth? Where's the people? Where's the spiritualness? Where's the, where's the moves? Where's the, you know, all this good stuff, man. And, and, and so, you know, and then like that leads down a road of what am I not doing right? What, what am I not doing? What am I not, slope. yeah, what am I not hearing? How, how could I get better? Is it me that's in the way? You know, am I the problem or, you know, and like we just go through that stuff sometimes, man. And and I think it's difficult. Uh, like I said, if it wasn't, everybody would be doing it. 
But I think it's difficult to stay the path to trust and then to to see what God has in store. Yeah, and I was listening to a podcast earlier this week. Not uh, us. No, yeah, you not, wouldn't not listen to us. us I'm so. here. I don't have to listen to us. I'm here. <laughs> Uh, but no, in, in this podcast, this guy was talking about, you know, some of the things that he's like, he's been involved with, like businesses growing from the bottom up. And, you know, he said, you know, I, I want to give some very discouraging news, but also encouraging news. And he said that it takes about a decade for something to start from nothing to build into something great. And he yeah. said, it, you know, it, he's like, you know, and, and it's crazy because hardly anybody makes it that long. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, it, he's like, if people can be consistent, if people can keep at it and keep going and keep growing then it'll eventually be something big. But again, most people give up before it hits that point. Yeah. That age of maturity, that ripeness, uh, however yeah, you want to say yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I, I think it's just, you know, we, we talk so much on this podcast about the importance of consistency. Um, you know, we, we talk about it over and over and over again. You know, and hopefully if you're listening and watching, uh, you know, you're almost probably tired of hearing us talk about being consistent. Uh, because most of you out there aren't. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's important to be we can consistent. Tell right? by the right? We can no. tell by the amount of listeners. We can tell by the amount of listeners, by the uh, people who don't come consistently. Shout <laughs> out, out to right? India, bro. Yeah, Y'all India's are being consistent. consistent. Yeah, Absolutely. India's being pretty consistent. Yep. More consistent yep. than most states here in America. But, right, right. Uh, but, you know, again, it, it's important to be consistent. You know, and, and we, we struggled with that, you know, even just with this podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, being consistent, it's tough. It's hard, you know, unless you're really, you know, um, intentional about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you set things and set plans. Uh, ahead of time, you know, it, it's pretty hard uh, to, to be consistent. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, there, and we, this is the reason we're actually, you know, we're trying to switch it up to do it on Sundays now. To be because, more consistent. Yeah, so we could be more consistent. Yeah. You know, it, it's because we both are for sure have Sundays off. And, yeah. You know, we, we can just kind of get this knocked out and have the rest of the week without it having to worry about it except for yeah. Wednesday night. Um, and so, you know, it, it's been it's been hard to be consistent. I mean, I know if you are a faithful listener, you know, you, you've seen there's been weeks without us doing it, especially here at the beginning of 2024. Um, but you know, again, it's just been, it's been a struggle to keep things consistent, but, uh, you know, again, we do it consistently out of the hope that again, like we mentioned last week, you know, that somebody out there will listen to episode like 26 and it'll change yeah. their life forever. Right. Or, you know, right. they'll, it'll, they'll bring it to somebody else and it'd be something they needed to hear. And, yeah. you know, we, we hope that this consistency will eventually grow into something. And yes, we know it's not all about numbers, you know, as right. far as it's not about how many people are listening and how many, how many people are downloading and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, it, it, it would be nice to to be able to be consistent enough where we build a platform and where we can have a bigger amount of people that we yeah. can reach and talk to. Because, you know, yeah. I mean, it, you'd be silly not to want that. Right. I think at least in some regard, you know, you want it to, to happen the right way. Yeah. You know, you want it to be, you know, where you're speaking to people who are actually listening and wanting to make a change. Yeah. You want to build a community uh, around, of people who are, you know, not, not too cultish, uh, but you want to build a community of people who are going to listen and, you know, buy in and, and help and support. That point, bro. Right, yeah. you know, I mean, people, cults would be easier. Yeah, uh, I've said that from the beginning, bro. <laughs> I've said that from the beginning, man. Cults are so much easier than what church is, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but yeah, I agree with that. Like, you know, the, the consistency part of it um, is where people struggle a lot. And whenever you say consistency, I hear the word priorities. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it's, it's truly like it's, there, there's a lot that goes into it. I think passion, I always preach about passion because I feel like, and I've said this before, like there are people who know more about the Bible than I, than I do. There are people who are very skilled in geographical, uh, Hebrew, Greek translations, things like that. Um, but I tell people all the time, you will not out preach me. Mm -hmm. You will not do it because I am. I have this passion and this desire to translate the word of God to people to where they understand it, they accept it, and they want to change because of it. Mm -hmm. That's my passion. That's my drive. Uh, and, and that's why I, I do. I get I get excited. I get excited to preach. I get excited to carry the word of God. I get excited uh, to do things like that. And because I do. Um, you know, that is the passion that goes in behind it. And it's like, but I also have to accept the problems that comes with it, the problems that comes with leading, the problems that comes with ministry, the problems that come, you know, and, and, and it's like, there, there are going to be things where it's like, there's, there's such a, there's such a great time. Uh, but then at some point in time, it's like, there's always that drama or that mm -hmm. little bitty thorn or that, and, and, and you know, in your side, like Paul was talking people about, people suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a reoccurring thing, yeah. man. Hence the name of the podcast. Um, yeah, it's the reoccurring theme. But but I think too, what I think I truly think that passion is what separates people. And mm -hmm. and truly passion is what pushes you in the direction of your priorities. Mm -hmm. If, yeah, I think if, passion, if I think, we're honest. Yeah, I think your passions will show your priorities. Often. Yes, you know, what yes, you're passionate yes. about shows what your priorities are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, we 
we, we talked about this, and I don't remember if we've mentioned it on the podcast yet or not, but, you know, when we went to Winter Jam not too long ago, um, you know, we, we saw that, you know, there was a little break in the middle uh, where there's like this DJ guy and he started playing some, I guess you call them secular songs. Uh, like he played Party in the USA. I was going to say it's Party in the USA. Uh, yeah. How is that not secular? Right. How is that? <laughs> I guess that's the word I was looking for. I can I've never, never get heard. away. I'm always getting backwards with it. Yeah. Uh, but like it, it, they started playing Party in the USA. And when I tell you that these people in this auditorium, this Rupp Arena, when they lost their minds in comparison to Katie Nicole singing about praying for Jesus' healing over your life. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, these people were all, I mean, everybody all together singing this song. And, and then they switched to another secular song, and everybody all together was singing this song, getting excited about it, getting enthusiastic about it. Yeah. And we talk about this all the time. You know, you can sit there and be passionate about the Super Bowl when, you know, if you're a, a Chiefs fan and they win, you're going to be losing your mind. You're right. really passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like when, when, you know, Keenan or somebody's up here on a stage on a, on a Sunday at church, you know, and they're preaching the word of God and they're being truthful and they're hitting you hard at the core and they're teaching you and leading you, like, and it's just crickets. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, you yeah. know, are, are you passionate about growing with Christ? Are you passionate about helping other people? Yeah. Are you passionate about that? Because if you are, your priorities will show it. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah, if you're yeah, passionate yeah. about those things, you're going to show up to church as much as you can. Yeah. If you're passionate about those things, you're going to be sharing the right things on Facebook. Yeah. You know, if you're passionate about those things, you're going to be cutting people out of your life. Yeah. It, it, it is just, again, your passion and priorities, they go hand in hand. Well, consistency is all about breeding routine. Mm -hmm. and And as much as what we... As much as what we hate routine and we don't go, we don't want to get into a routine in church or in a church service. I think in order for us to grow in the spirit, things do have to become routine in our lives, like reading the Bible, uh, like praying, uh, like growing, like tithing, like giving, like serving, like showing up, like you know, teaching, like you know, whatever the case is. Uh, you know, I think those things right there, there has to be a consistency in that and there has to be a passion inside of that where it's like um you know the, the the deal about this was was that and and i love the way i can't remember the pastor i was listening to uh whenever he was talking about the cross but he said you know we, we talk about whenever jesus was looking at his disciples and he said deny yourself pick up your cross and follow me OK, mm. that we have to remember that whenever Jesus was saying this, that the cross was not a representation of something good at that point. You know, the cross mm. was a representation of death, of mm. torture. torture. Yeah. Of pain, of of agony, you know, and all of this good stuff. And it's like so when Christ was saying, pick up your cross, it's not like he was saying, you know, pick up forgiveness, mm. pick, up, pick up grace, pick up love, pick up. You know, Christ was saying, deny yourself. But then pick up your cross, which means, you know what, you're, you're denying yourself. So now you're going to pick up your cross. Well, guess what? He said, they're going to hate you because they first hated me. So you're going to feel defeat sometimes. You're going to feel anguish. You're going to feel pain. You're going to feel discomfort. You're going to feel, you know, this stuff happening in your life. And the question becomes, are you still going to follow? And are you still going to pursue? And are you still going to do whenever the pain is there? Mm -hmm. And whenever the frustration is there? And whenever, whenever, you know, the, the results are not coming in and the numbers aren't making sense and, you know, everything else seems like, you know, all sides are saying you should just stop. But he's saying deny yourself, mm -hmm. die to yourself, pick up that cross, feel the pain and discomfort of it, and then follow me. And, you know, I think we've done a great job, I feel like, in, in churches of talking about this wonderful, glorious, mystic place called heaven. I, I feel like we've done a good job and. Again, we talk about hype sermons and power sermons of, of motivation, inspiration. You know, Jesus loves you. He's for you. He's fighting for you. He's blessing you. He's mm -hmm. taking care of you. He's protecting you. But I, I think we've done a real, uh, and I think I said damn earlier. Uh, I'm going to follow it up oh, with, wow. uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to follow it up with piss poor um, mm -hmm. job of, of letting people know that a walk with Christ and, 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 I mean, I'll just be honest with you. The pulpit, leadership, um, classrooms, you know, these these ministries that you step into is not just a feel-good type moment where uh, where you're going to just live on rainbows and unicorns. It's mm -hmm. not like that. Uh, and, and there's going to be times of frustration and times of pain and agony and a lot of stuff that's going to happen. And then you have to decide in that moment, does your passion outweigh your problem? Because if you're passionate, if you're passionate about this, there's nothing that's going to come against you 
that, yeah, it may feel like it's going to knock you out. It may feel like it will kill you. But I can tell you, there's nothing that's going to come against you that's going to outweigh your passion if it's strong enough. You know, and I, I think that's where we have to really, like you said, your passion begins to show priorities. And then your priorities, I think, really fall in line with what you're pursuing, I feel mm -hmm. like, at that point. Got a lot of few words. I, bro, that's how <laughs> yeah. I make good points. Yeah, I, I, that, I, learned that, that, I learned that speaking term from Furtick, man. Word, yeah, alliteration. Yeah, yeah Furtick always talks about alliteration and how it's like the power of the P's or, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so, he, yeah, P's. yeah. so he'll he'll make like seven P words in a, you know, in a sentence, and everybody's like, oh, you know. And, wow. Yeah, wow, I know, wow, yeah, those, that, that John yeah. Chris hype yeah, man yeah, in the yeah, second yeah. row. Those, those paid people who say, <laughs> cheer and clap and say, amen, oh, brother, man. hallelujah. I yeah. tell you what, sometimes I think it'd be worth a stone cold twenty, maybe right, a fifty. Yeah. Uh, just to get some dude uh, off the street and be like, "Look, dude, I'll man. buy your, uh, I'll buy your Bud Light tonight." If you got, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like, "Hey, get my bro, what's come in here. Yeah, you oh might get God. some Jesus. You may not want that Bud Light after yeah, we're done. Well, but, you, you know, can leave fine. it here, whatever." Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll have veins popping out in my head. My eyes will be strained out in red, and like I'll just be like really into it. And then like I'll hear like six people be like, <laughs> and "I'll be like." Like six, shut six up! Strong yeah, it's like shut up. Oh, okay. Well, four. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. my hearing's not the best, so right, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Over exemplifies it. Just right, like, hey, yeah, right. There are a lot more people out there than I thought there. Yeah, right. Uh, how many were there? Ninety six. <laughs> no matter what, there's always going to be ninety six in this place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, I feel like whenever all that goes down, it's like, again, I think people see the 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 perfect put together pretty picture, mm -hmm. but they don't see everything else that goes on behind closed doors. Just, mm -hmm. just a, uh, just a, I mean, just a little tidbit, man. Service hadn't even started this morning. Service hadn't even started. I have not come down from up top to start shaking hands with people and I already had a, not a complaint, but I already had somebody going through something this morning before mm -hmm. service even started, you know, something that I'll have to address. And I'm like, Sitting here, I'm like, man, I'm like, you know, like, here it is. We hadn't even got service started yet. And I'm going to go down there and, and, you know, through the power of Jesus, preach the best that I can. And people are not going to know what was said to me 20 minutes before this thing got started. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, so that's where I want people to understand where it's like, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful calling. It's, to me, man, ministry is second to none. Uh, being able to watch somebody's heart and life change right before your eyes is a beautiful thing. I will always thank God to be able to witness people change their hearts and lives. I'm talking like physically like fall on you, ready to give it all to Jesus. I'm thankful for that. Uh, and But I also want people to understand that before you go into any type of ministry, I don't care what it is, music ministry, kids ministry, you know, young adults, uh, teenage ministry, uh, I was going to say youth, but I don't know where the youth word went to. Um, preaching, teaching, evangelizing, like it doesn't matter, man. Before you go into any ministry, you best make sure that you are passionate about it. Uh, because if not, I'm going to be honest Absolutely. with you, uh, mm -hmm. people will eat you alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people will eat you alive. And I mean, you just don't put like... I mean, you know, and, and just throw some, I guess, even worldly examples out there. You know, don't take a job that you're not passionate about. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, if, if you Yeah, let's are, talk world for a little right, bit, man. Let's talk worldly. Yeah. Let's get out of the spiritual <laughs> Jesus. I'm um, tired, but, man. Uh, you know, like, cause I, was, I was just having a conversation with one of the youth on our hike today. Um, and we were talking about, like, this teacher who's not very passionate about our kids. You know, he doesn't take the time to, like, kind of help them out and, you know, work around any of kind of differences or issues they may have you know like if a kid's got adhd you know they're yeah. not taking the time to help that kid talk to them um and again i understand that teachers have a finite amount of time and a lot of kids to deal with yeah. um but again you you can um you can deal with situations with more grace than some people do uh you know a lot of times there are people who take jobs and well i mean here's a few other examples you know there are people who take jobs as teachers who hate kids there are people who take <laughs> there are people who take jobs as a cop who just you know want to abuse the power and authority given to them? Before They're, you go any further, I got to say this because it's so funny you say that. Uh, mm -hmm. Because we were talking at work the other day about people going to college and doing stuff, and I, I, I said, "Man, and I truly believe this. College is not for everybody. Amen. I truly believe that." Uh, and I told this guy, I said, "Literally, I was wasting my time. I, mm -hmm. I, I was going for elementary education. That's horrible. Like mm -hmm. that is so horrible because." Um, you know, I love, again, I joke about not loving kids, but I love kids. I do love kids, man. Love them enough to put up with them eight hours a day to try to teach them um, mm. for, for, for low income. Refer, refer for, back to the first five minutes. Yeah, yeah, podcast. right. For <laughs> low income pay, ah, that's probably not so much. Uh, you know, and I, but, but that's the deal. Like, I was thinking about that. Like, I was about ready 
Like I was just wandering down a path of, of non-happiness mm. and I wasn't passionate. I'll be a thousand percent honest. I might have got a job. But I wouldn't have been passionate about it, and I would have hated it. Yeah, you, you wouldn't know? have given those kids what they deserve. But yeah, um, and but I, go ahead. And yeah, not to just completely rain down on you there for a second. But uh, again, you know, I, if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to put your heart into it, and, yeah. and you're you're serving people who deserve to have your full you know attention. That's big. Uh, and I, like that, and I, yeah. I think that that's just something that we we need to have in mind. You know, like you know, there's so many so many like uh, you know, I'll just be 100% honest. You know, my grandma was just in the nursing home recently. And I mean, you know, these CNAs, these nurses didn't give a rat's butt about their job. Like they didn't like her, there was medicine on the floor. They didn't get her up to take her to the bathroom like they were supposed to. What they didn't do medicine? just anything, you know, just pain medicine, things of that nature. Like you could sell that, bro. right? They could. They probably were. <laughs> uh, but again, you know, just they, you know, they weren't doing anything, you know, to show that they care about. He's just praying for forgiveness. Uh, I am. Uh, Lord, forgive me. Um, I'll, I'll wait till oh, we're done. Uh, but you know, they weren't doing anything to show that they cared about the patients that they were serving. Right. You know, these people who who deserved all of their attention, who deserved their care. Yeah. You know, they they took a, you know, I mean, they really signed take an oath, but they they signed on to do this job. You know, they went to school for a long time to do this job. Yeah. Um, and they're they're neglecting all that. You know, and again, we talk about you know police officers all the time. You know, these people who take up the, the position of a police officer and then abuse that power and authority, they should not have been in that position. Yeah. Uh, or police officers who can't handle the pressure and an acorn falls on the police cruiser and they shoot it up. <laughs> like, like that, that is crazy. Like, get, get into a different job field. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, and, you know, pastors who hate people and try to get up on this pulpit and damn them to hell every single Sunday. <laughs> He's going to pray forgiveness again. Lord, forgive uh, yeah, we, we're going to be just keeping at it all night. Or I know not uh, what, that, what I do. <laughs> uh, but you, you, you got to choose a, a, a career. And again, I understand there's, there's extreme or extenuating circumstances. Uh, but you know, you, you have to choose, you know, something you're passionate about to pursue yeah. that, pursue your yeah. passion. Because again, as we just said, you know, you ha those people that you're serving deserve your full attention. Uh, and, and you can't give that to them if you're not passionate about it. That's true. Uh, and, and you don't need to waste their time. You don't need to waste, you know, your time. You need to let somebody else fill those shoes. Yeah. Uh, you know, because there is somebody out there that right. is willing, able, and obedient to do that and to do that with their fullest ability, passion, and authority. Yeah. Uh, and so you need to allow those people to do it. You know, if you're somebody who hates kids, don't be a teacher. If you're somebody who hates people, don't be a preacher. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I'm what else am I supposed right, to do, right? Lord? Yeah. yeah. Be a police officer, uh, you can yeah. do that, but sell insurance, right, sell insurance. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, those, those are the worst people, uh, the absolute worst people. Uh, uh but I, again, I think that's just what's important, you know. And you just got to make sure that you know your your passions, you know, are gonna. And, and this is something else, you know, too, is your passion and priority. We've talked about how those are going hand in hand. Um, you know, how do you how do you get passionate about something? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that's a question that a lot of people have is, you know, like I, I want to. You know, yeah. like I, I remember being in a church service when I was little and looking over at this um, lady. She was from Africa. You know, she didn't speak English all that great, but she was passionate for God. Yeah. I mean, this woman was in church every Sunday, just jumping up and down, crying, raving her hands, mm -hmm. going up to the altar and praying, giving testimony, all this stuff. I mean, and she was just going crazy for God. Yeah. And I remember looking over there like, man, I wish I had that. Yeah. And, you know, and I can say that I have grown to a closer level to that. And I'm very, very thankful of that. You know, I, I'm thankful that I can now stand up in church service, raise my hands and not care who, you know, what anybody else thinks or praise God or, you know, sway back and forth or, you know, whatever. Um, but again, you know, how do you get to that point? You don't sway. I, I do sometimes. No, you're I just off sometimes. balance. Yeah, you don't sway. Sure. I am very off balance. I'm <laughs> off balance quite a bit, actually. Uh, I told somebody the other day, I said, every time I walk through a doorway, I feel like I'm about to hit the wall. <laughs> it's just like the momentum just keeps me going. Oh, um, but again, you know, how do I get passionate? And I think how you get passionate is by changing your priorities. Uh, you know, yeah. like if, you know, you, if you want to get passionate for God, you have to change what you spend the most time on. You know, this you have true. to make time for what you want to make time for. Well, like we talked about today, uh, you know, in the Bible where it's like, you know, I felt like the Holy Spirit broke it down so simple. Mm -hmm. And it, it was like, you know, in order to be more, in order to experience God more, you have to be more God minded. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like the more that you think about God, the more that you pray, the more that you seek him. Of course, you're going to mm -hmm. find him. You're going to rest in him. You're going to want to know more about him. And so, like you said, I mean, like, you know, it's 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 priorities. And it's mm -hmm. the, whatever you got to do is what you're going to do. And what's important to you is going to show through at some yeah, point in absolutely. time. Absolutely. I mean, and like, let's tear down some excuses real quick. Um, so, you know, again, if you don't think you have time to read the Bible, instead of scrolling through Facebook while you're taking your morning poop, pull out your Bible and read it then like yeah. great time. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. it's a great chunk. of. I mean, you don't have to spend an hour reading your Bible. If it's something you have a hard time to do. just start with 15 minutes, you know, uh, and this, and this may be wrong. I don't know. 
Uh, maybe Jesus will talk to me about it one day. But, you know, I, I feel an urgency to read the Bible for other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense or not. But Don't worry, God. You know, since since uh, Nick didn't read the day, I read an extra I read, Well, no, no, no. I, 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 I don't mean it like that. But, like, I mean it like, like you talked about Facebook. Mm-hmm. So, every day, I try to make a meaningful post. Not like, you know, hey, I hate hot egg and cheese, ham and cheese sandwiches or something, you know. Right. Freaking McDonald's. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Like, like, I try to use my Facebook platform to, to bring some kind of meaningful message every day. Uh, and, I, and I try 97% of the time to make it Bible related. Something I've read in the Bible. So it, it, it really, to me, honestly, it holds me kind of accountable mm-hmm. as well. Because I'm like, if I'm not posting, if I'm not preaching, if I'm not downloading, if I'm not, you know, uh, uh, sharing. Uh, sharing or whatever, like, you know, it's like, like you said, for those people who are constantly on their phone, uh, not reading the Bible, but scrolling mm-hmm. Facebook, scrolling TikTok, scrolling YouTube, scrolling whatever, um, you know, I'm hoping that maybe there's a chance that they might come across, you know, something mm-hmm. that is said or done on that post. That literally, it, it may it may convict them. It may touch their heart and life. It may cause them to do something. And so, like for me, like it's 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 an accountability thing for me. Where I've like I've even I've just began to tell myself where I'm like, you know what, Kenan? Like, it, if nothing else, read the Bible for other people mm-hmm. because other people are not going to make the priority to change until maybe they see something that you've mm-hmm. read or that you've done or that you've said. And then at that moment, they might be like, oh, my God, like that, that changed mm-hmm. my life. Does it really say that in the Bible? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like if you can create intrigue and, and if you can create a conversation or, you know, something like that, then, you know, if you've planted a seed in some way, like that's uh, mm-hmm. that's just me just kind of bearing it a little bit there and just telling you, well, like, I mean, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's an accountability thing people. for me. And I, I mean, we I've talked about this, uh, you know, toward when we first kind of started the podcast, you know, talking about how I tried to stop sharing negative news stories all the time because yeah. you know, there's nothing. And that you've gotten better. I have. I've tried. You've gotten now. better. I've tried. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's important <laughs> to try and share more, you know, meaningful, encouraging, motivational things. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and because, again, there's a lot of people on there all day long and they they're, see, they're seeing the worst possible stuff that you can see all day long you know and it, i think it's just important you know to try and spread some encouragement try to spread some positivity t- positivity um which is something i have a lack of apparently but uh, i'm getting better <laughs> i yeah, try, I try yeah, to get yeah, better yeah. sometimes you know he doesn't believe me. um <laughs> but again you know i and again you know you you can make time for things you just have to take a you know take a step back and look at your life and try to fit things in where you can you know what i mean yeah. if you're like oh going to the gym is super important to me well guess what you can do at the gym you can listen to a Christian podcast. You can listen to people suck. Love them anyway. Uh, you can listen to the Bible dope, being read dope. to you by Snoop Dogg these days. I hear that's yeah. a thing. You know, yeah. like there's there's so many different ways that you can get fed while you're doing other things. And yes, you know, I, you know, you're still kind of in that situation, putting you know, working out, you know, over reading the Bible because you're doing that in, in a, you know, in along with doing, yeah. you know, working yeah. out. But at least it gets your foot in the door. Right. Uh, you know, it, it gets you started. It gets your mind thinking about this. You know, when you get in your car every day, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to listen to Tupac every day when you get in the car. Not every you day. You can turn on Christian radio, listen Some to days. a little bit of that, right? Uh, you know, again, it's it's up to you. There's little small things that you can do throughout your entire daily routine, your weekly routine, whatever. Yeah. Um, you can insert God into that. And again, once you make God a priority, you make time for God, you'll start to see that passion grow and grow and grow. Um, you know, when you start coming in here and worship and close your eyes and don't worry about what's people around you and you raise your hands and you praise God, you know, and you get in that that worship space. And then again, you know, you're growing, your passion is growing. You're You're going to get further and further into this whole Christian thing. Um, you know, and I think it's just important for us again to just to take time to make time, yeah, uh, to get to get time with God. Yeah, and like as you were saying that, like I was just scrolling through my Facebook, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, yeah. and He's uh, obviously not focused, not on listening podcast. to a word I'm saying or you're saying. Uh, but no, like like what you were saying, like whenever you start to swing through here, like you see, like I'm just seeing different stuff uh, all the time. So uh, you know, I see ultimate protein bars. I see. Uh, uh car ads uh i see uh probably some kind of uh somebody trying to sell you something somebody trying to sell me something yeah i see pictures of babies uh i see target ads i see you know so like what what i'm trying to say is with that is the fact of that like that as you're scrolling through you're going to see like people are going to see whatever mm-hmm. you know people are going to see so much junk it doesn't matter and, and i've said this many a times I, I you know people 
I think people know you by more by the the recipes that you share versus mm-hmm. where you go to church and what you believe in. Yep. And I'm not saying like you know I'm not I'm, I'm not saying that your Facebook has to be Jesus twenty four seven three sixty five. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is is that in a day and a time where it is so important like never before to tell people about Jesus and to get people into church and to get people to Jesus and to get people to change their hearts and lives and to get people to lead and, and serve and to get people to grow. Like it's more important than ever before. And something that a Christian says, does, or post could change somebody's heart and life. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's be honest. We're not traveling to the highways and hedges and going to people's doors and knocking on them and saying, let me tell you about Jesus today. I know we're not Jehovah's Witnesses. I get it. Mm-hmm. But, but like we're not doing it even as Christians either. You know what I'm saying? Like we, 90% of our I'm day... That distinction. Uh, do Jehovah's what? Witness and Christian. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like, oh yeah. 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 Um, but like we're not, man. Like we're not. Let's be honest. 95% of our day is not spent evangelizing. It's, it's, it's not like we're going to the gas stations and the dollar stores and the, and the grocery stores going, let me tell you about Jesus. No, we're going in to get biscuits. We're going in to get water. Uh, we're going in to get gas. We're going in to get the essential items and get back out. Like, you know, our days are not spent evangelizing. So, I mean, let's, let's just be a thousand percent honest right here. We live in a day and an age and a technology era where where literally we are so tech savvy now, I'm not, some people are, where we can take something that is at the tip of our fingers and, and, and touch somebody's life in a different state, in a different city, in a different nation even. And that's what we're doing right mm-hmm. now. Like that is exactly what we're doing, um, you know, with this podcast where it's like, you know, uh, my accountability and, and, and I hope, you know, or I don't know what yours is, but my accountability <laughs> For this podcast is the fact of that whenever you come to me and you're like, Kenan, we had another country this week. It's Algeria. You know, and I'm like, Jesus, I don't even know where that is, but shout out Algeria. You know what I'm saying? Like, thank you so much. My accountability is, is that if we miss a week, if we miss, a, if we miss one episode, who did we miss mm-hmm. in that? You know, if we miss one sun, that's why I'm so passionate. Listen, you don't want to have church when it's raining or when it's storming or when it's snowing or when, when it's, it's icing, when it's bad, whatever. Yeah, like any major holiday or whatever. I don't care. Like, that's up to you. But my question is always going to be this. If I missed it, who did I miss? Mm-hmm. You know, who did I miss? And that's, I, I feel like that is the passion. That is mm-hmm. the drive. That is my accountability. I don't want to miss the chance because if I miss the chance, I might miss somebody. And that makes the difference to me. Yeah, Eminem said it once, you know, best, you know, don't miss your chance, your opportunity, you know, don't miss this chance to blow whatever. Yeah, yeah. I was like, where are you yeah, going like, with I'd, this? Yeah. yeah lose you only get one yeah, shot yeah, to not miss you your go. chance to blow because opportunity comes once in a lifetime. There you know, you yeah. You nailed it. I, Absolutely. I, I, yeah. I, was, I, was born, yeah. I was born and raised Christian. I didn't listen uh-huh. to that. Uh-huh. 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 I still got a streak in me. I'm just going to tell you, yeah, you know. I can't say much. I got a mad Yeah. I just. I, I I went from yeah. one white trash to the other, but there you <laughs> but, go. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, and I, I think it's this. Um, you know, it's one thing to take away from from tonight. Um, you know, it's, you know, three words: passion, priorities, and consistency. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all the things that we've talked about. Um, you know, they kind of go back to one of those things, and they all work together. They do. Um, you know, I think it's just important. You know, if you really want to become more passionate about God, you have to make Him a priority, and you have yeah. to consistently make Him a priority. True. Um, and I think that's something we all need to get better at. You know, again, I know we struggle with it from time to time with this podcast, with just different things. I mean, yes, as we've talked about many times before, it would be a lot easier to not do these things. It would be a lot easier, a lot more convenient. Um, you oh, know, yeah. We could relax more and all that kind of good yeah. stuff. Uh, but as you said, you know, what if? I think that's the question that Keith was going a lot is, you know, what if? Who would yeah. we miss? What if we miss somebody? Yeah. You know, what if we don't do this podcast one week? What if we don't have service this day? Um, you know, what if that was going to be the Sunday that somebody decided to come for the first time or somebody decided to listen for the first time or, you know, and, and there's all kinds of different things that you could throw in there with that. So I, I think it's just important uh, to, you know, to take a chance today. Um, if you've listened all the way through, watched all the way through, whichever, uh, to ask yourself, you know, what, where is your relationship with God? You know, are you passionate enough to make him a priority? Are you yeah. consistently making him a priority? Uh, and, and if not, then, you know, maybe it's time to begin make some changes. Um, yeah. Start inserting him in, inserting him into your life. Uh, in, in places and times and opportunities that you're doing other things. 
uh, we're replacing other things um, with what you're doing there. Uh, I, thought you were gonna say, there. I thought you were going to say insert images of him. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm like, you're going to carry a picture of Jesus around yeah, with you just, all day? I'm like, playing, you know? Yeah, just good old, plain old white Jesus. You <laughs> yeah. know, just okay. hanging right in here. every Baptist church across, yeah. America. Yeah, all across America. Blonde haired, blue eyed, fair skinned Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hitler would be proud, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we got to end on that yeah. point tonight. Uh, so, yeah. So, again, we thank you so much, man, for tuning in. We hope that something is said, something is done that at least makes you think, you know, at least makes you challenge yourself and say, am I where I need to be at? Um, those guys look like they're a total mess, and and, and, they, and Jesus still loves them, you know. So I got a fighting chance. Uh, there you go. So we love you so much. We thank you so much for tuning in. Until we see you again, we love you be blessed.